Hey everybody, and welcome back to another installment in our Getting Started with Apex. Today we are going to be talking about the call stack and how that works. It's one of the more computer science-y things I think we've done so far, but I think it's something that's really important to uh, having an accurate mental model of how your programs work. Also, I think it's fundamental to understanding, I mean, there is a call, there is a stack depth governor limit in Apex, so obviously Salesforce considers it important. And it's important understanding uh, later on how recursion works. So the stack is a really important thing for all developers to understand if you are trying to get started in this industry. All right, so that this is this video is a little different than maybe a couple of the ones I've done so far in that um, we're going to have a couple more slides. My PowerPoint skills are garbage, so uh, I'll tell you right now, please excuse me for that. And I wrote all the code ahead of time. Uh, this one, I thought like it wasn't so important that we code in real time and work through this together, but that you just we just talk through the code itself and see if we can figure out how it's going to work. So I said, let's switch over to the slides. All right. So the call stack, and you're going to hear it sometimes with the stack, the execution stack, right? But so essentially, uh, a stack. Well, first, it's a computer science data structure, right? And as the first item onto the stack is the last item out, right? So as a method is called, it's going to be pushed or pushed as the computer science term, pushed onto the stack. So if we call method A, method A is now on the stack and the stack is just a place in memory, all right? Where, where your program has reference to that method, to its variables that were locally scoped and so on. And it stays on the stack until it has finished its work. And when it's complete, the method is all done, it is taken off out of memory or popped off of the stack. First method call, first method call, first on the stack. And as each method is, so if a method A calls a method B, then method B gets put on top of the stack. So this looks like um, call stack in action. This is my first time trying to do animation in PowerPoint, by the way. Get, get ready for these slick animation skills, right? We call method A and boom, check out that red box, right? Uh, that red box represents method A. Method A is now pushed onto the stack. And method A says, hey, method B, uh, I'm going to give you, do something for me, all right? And I'm going to wait for you to finish that up, all right? So then method B, that amazing blue box. And Pixar, uh, I'll send you my resume if you're interested in my, uh, my, my computer science animation skills, right? Method B, pushed onto the stack. There we go. And so now method A is still there because it's got to wait for it's waiting for method B to finish its work. All right, method B is going to actually make a call to method C. All right, so bam, yellow box, that's method C. All right, so method C is on the stack now. All three, so method C then completes whatever work it needed to do and it is popped off of the stack, it's out of memory. So all references, say, to like, like local variables that were scoped inside that method, they're gone. They no longer exist in memory. Now control of our program just flowed back to method B. Method B is the next thing on the stack. So whatever it was waiting for from method C, it's going to do it, pop off the stack, and return control to method A. Method A is going to complete, and boom, pop off the stack. But if we had all three back, so Apex has a stack depth limit, which is 1,000, which is... Go, it's something that I'm going to say prevents you from using a lot of recursion in Apex. And recursion is just a method that calls itself until some, it hits some sort of a condition where it's going to exit. Um, so languages that use a lot of recursion uh, can have stacks much higher than 1,000, right? As these methods pile up, as it's solving maybe a factorial is a great kind of beginner example of how to, you, you can't even go very high and, and try to compute a factorial before we hit a stack depth of 1,000. So in Apex, and say you have a runaway, you know, an infinite loop, essentially. That would add, once it, instead of just, you know, running away, running forever, hogging resources on the platform all day, once a thousand of these boxes is a good way to visualize it, you got a thousand of these boxes on the stack, you're going to get a governor limit error and get kicked off. And I'm just going to mention, so when the class itself, also when a class gets put on, when you say, you know, class A equals new, that class goes in another place in memory called the heap. And we'll maybe do another video on the heap, but I just want you to be familiar with the word because there is another governor limit about maximum heap size. So you have stack a stack depth governor limit and a heap size governor limit, and the two can be related. But today we're talking about the stack, right? So let's get out of let's get out of PowerPoint and let's go look at some code.
All right. So I wrote two really simple classes today. First one is just called call stack. It's got three methods. Uh, method A that calls method B. Method B that calls method C, right? So when this one runs, what would happen, right? So line seven, method A, it's going to go on the stack, and it's going to run execute line eight, system.debug. Then it's going to go to line nine, right? And it's going to call method B. So now control goes down here to line 14, method B. Line 10, this is important to understand, line 10 does not run. Not yet, anyway. It's going to, it shoots straight down here. It skips to line 14 and runs that debug log. And then goes to line 15. Line 15 makes a call to method C. So now line 16, that doesn't run yet. We go straight to line 19, which runs the debug statement. And once that is done, all right, so now we have three methods on the stack, A, B, and C. Once C runs its debug statement, I mean, that's all we asked it to do. It's gone, popped off the stack. All right, so now control comes back up to method B, and it runs line 16. So now method B completes. It did everything we asked it to do, and it's popped off the stack. It sends control back to method A. Method A is done. It runs that debug log. All three methods, our stack is empty. So at one point, we had a stack depth of three. Then each of those methods, as they completed, it popped off and it was gone. So let's just well, let's run it in anonymous Apex, right? And let's take a look. So call stack stack equals new call stack, right? We instantiate it, goes on the heap. We say stack.method A. Let's go down and look at our... Um, I'm going to see if I can show you some debug. We're just going to go straight to the debug log. And it's exactly what we expected, right? In method A, in method B line 14, in method C, line 19, and then method B is done. Method A is done, and this class is done. It is done executing, and we are all good. Let me get rid of that little pop-up there. So that's a, now we're going to do call stack 2. Let me close this one out. Call stack 2 is a little more complicated. Um, so we are going to have, we have our first method called do some math. And then on line eight, it makes a call to the method addition. All right. Addition does something. And then on line 15, it makes a call to the multiply method. Multiply does something. And then here on line 22, it makes a call to the subtract method. Subtract does something. And then here on line 30, it has a return. So what happened is then multiply was waiting for this return value from subtract. Right, because we had integer response equals subtract, and we passed it in the value of multiply response. So line 30 completed. Now line 22 had can complete executing. It had to wait. And we can run line 23 and we can run line 24. Because so subtract is now off the stack. Addition, remember, was waiting because up here on line 15, response is equal to multiply. So addition is waiting for that return value. Now that it has that value back, multiply is gone. It's popped off the stack. Line 16 executes and line 17 executes. And we go control flows back up here to do some math. Because remember up here at line, nine, line 8 where we kicked this whole thing off, final result equals addition. Final result had no value until all three of these methods were on the stack. All three had done their work and been popped off. So now line 8 can finish executing. Line 9 executes and line 10 executes and it returns a value. So we are going to run this. I'm going to pass it a very simple argument of 5. Maybe take a second here, pause the video, and see if you could figure out what value 5 would return when we run this code. All right, now we're going to go back over to whether you paused or not. We're going to go anonymous apex, call stack two, stack two, right? Put it on the heap, integer answer, stack equals stack two dot do some math. So we're making a, we instantiated a class. So we're making a call to the do some math method and giving it an argument of five. 
And then we should get, we'll see our answer in our debug statement down here. Let's execute. And we right now, I only have debug only. So we can see 10, 20, subtraction. Remember, so addition added 5. Multiply at was times 2. Subtraction, subtracted 5. And then it passed control back up from subtraction to multiply, from multiply to addition, and then back to do some math, and then back here to our line three in our anonymous apex. So I think a really great way to visualize this, and also maybe another tool I think is absolutely essential to understand to being a, a great developer, is we're gonna run this with the debug log. I'm gonna use the debug log that's a feature in IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud. Uh, but Visual Studio Code also has the Salesforce Replay Debugger, so you should be able to do the exact same thing. And debuggers all kind of work the same, right? So we're just, I'm going to hit debug. All right. And I'm going to go over to my debugger. And this is, I'm going to, this is just great. So if you're not familiar, so what I'm going to do, right now we're on line one, actually. I'm going to step over. And we are on answer and now we're on line two. And what I want to do at this point is step into. I want to step into this method call. All right. And that took me to, you see, if I just switched over, I'm on line eight. Final result equals addition. And my debugger is showing me the value of my variables as I go through. Value of number is five. I've got it also down here in my log. All right. So step over. Final result. And now I can see my final result. It has a value of 15. You know what? Pardon me. I should have stepped into, not stepped over. So I'm going to stop, rerun, back to debugger, step over, step into. All right. Uh, step over, step over. And why do I keep getting this wrong today? All right. Let's try it one more time. Step over, step into. All right, we want to step into right here. Integer final result equals addition. Step into. And so now that takes us down to addition. Number to add, right? And we're going to step over that. So we can see now the value of our addition result is 10. Step over. Now we're going to step into, because now we're calling the multiply method. Let's step into that. So we pop down here. And we could see the value, it got past a value of 10. Now the multiply result is has a value of 20. That's the value in our variable. You can see that down here. Step over, let's step into subtract now. Subtract, got past a value of 20. I'm gonna step over. We're down here in our debug. Now we're back to our return statement. So if we come back now, you can see we went back up. So essentially, method the subtract method has now been popped off the stack. And our control is now back up here on line 23 of our multiply method. All right, so now we go, we execute line 23 and we execute line 24. And that is what, if you remember, our addition method was waiting on that, right? Because response equaled that. So now it has a response value back of 15. Can execute line 16, our debug statement. Returns the response. So now control flows back up to our do some math method. And it has a value, final result now equals 15. It had to wait for all three of those methods to execute, be pushed onto the stack, popped off the stack, and now it has a value of 15 executes its debug, returns final result, and there we go. We are back to our anonymous apex that called that in the first place. So that is the stack. That is how methods are popped, how pushed on, popped off. I really hope this is useful. I hope it makes you a much better developer, gives you a better mental model of how your programs work. Again, please take a second, hit like and subscribe, and keep coding, keep, keep, keep practicing, get better every day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.